Hello and welcome to another episode. Thank you for joining us today. Now, today we're going to be dealing with lessons that we have learned in lockdown. Now, I have to say that we recorded this in lockdown. So please be gracious because what's about to follow is a video that was done while we were all in our various homes over um, the internet with, with all the inconsistencies that you get with that. So please do bear with us. We believe that you'll still enjoy it. And we reached out to people here in Northern Ireland and also in the US, Caribbean, various places. And we got a lot of feedback about what people have learned and were learning at that time. And of course, we are now in a situation where we are pretty much coming out of lockdown and life is going to normality how are we going to implement those lessons that we've learned so please enjoy as you watch And welcome to Unmute, the podcast that raises the voices on the whispered conversations in our communities. Now, on today's podcast, we're discussing the lessons that we've learned during lockdown. My name is Angela Ifalaja, and the ladies at the table with me are Yolanda Robertson-Green, Natasha Latcham, and Raquel McKee. Now, over the last week, we've reached out to our various networks and posed this question. What have you learned about yourself and the world during this lockdown period? Now, we've got a lot of very interesting and insightful responses, about as varied as you can imagine. And we'll be sharing some of those with you as we go along. First of all, though, I want to ask the ladies to give their own insights, starting with Natasha. Hi. So what I learned about myself during lockdown, which I think was the first question we asked, was that um, that I didn't really have too much of a problem just taking, taking this lockdown on the chin. Um, I have a sense of self-preservation and I'm very pragmatic when it comes to certain things. So I was like, okay, so we need to stay in, we need to do this, we need to do that, no problem. Of course, I didn't expect us to still be in lockdown, but you know, it's, it's all right. <laughs> Um, I used to say that I need to work on my patience, but um, this lockdown period has really taught me, you know, a lot um, of patience and, and it has strengthened my patience. Um, so I think while that's not a new thing about myself, I'll just say it's something about my character that has been strengthened through the lockdown process. And um, yeah, I'll take that lesson going forward in life to practice a bit more patience. Very good. Thank you, Natasha. What about you, Yoland? Um, I think uh, probably, I, you know, I'm going to just start off with probably making what I want to refer to as a disclaimer. Um, I honestly really don't like talking about the lockdown, perhaps just for reasons relating to my character or my personality. Um, having worked in a very intense environment, intensity is my thing. I suppose I thrive on adrenaline rush, if you want to put it like that. So being in lockdown for me was really a stifling experience. I'm not the type of person that when I get out, um, just um, partying and things like that. But I do like to feel like I can dress up and get out of the house mm. and breathe. Mm. And um, having to do that via the internet and that type of thing is not me. I don't just get up and dress up for a computer. I can't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, though, I have to say, really, I can't wait to go back to work. When I go back to work, it would honestly be, in, in these words, like Stella's got her groove back, like waiting to exhale. That's how I feel. <laughs> but the, the, <laughs> the, the positive side is not, you know, it's not all bad. Uh, I haven't really learned anything per se about myself. I know who I am. But um, the good thing about lockdown is that I did spend a lot of time with one of my sons. I have two adult sons, one of whom is in mainland England studying, so I don't get to see him a lot. I have another son by whom I have a, a, a two-year-old granddaughter. And so I got to spend a lot of time with this younger son because we're always button heads. We really don't get along. So in lockdown, I spent a lot of time with him. We baked everything under the sun. We talked oh, a lot. Yeah. I watched a lot of um, cuisine shows and things and we practiced. So yeah, 
lockdown was all right, but I can't wait for it to be over. No <laughs> you and many other people, you learned. <laughs> it's funny though yeah. what you say about dressing up for the computer. You know, I love perfume, and I find myself when we're when we're going when, well, when we're going when we're doing church by Zoom or online, I'm putting on my perfume, and my daughter's like, "Why are you putting on perfume? You're not going anywhere." I'm like, "I just want to wear perfume." <laughs> <laughs> not for me. <laughs> oh, no. you know? uh, Raquel, what about you? <laughs> well, that's it's interesting you say that, Angela, because one of the things that I have found during lockdown is that I take moods with how I like to dress. There are some days that I quite like to be dressed up in nice things, and there are some days that I don't want to wear anything nice. I just want to wear the late, the grungiest wrap around the house thing that I can find and I don't want anybody to ask me any questions yeah. and I don't want to go anywhere <laughs> so <laughs> that's been interesting for me because there are some days that you know I'm sprucing around and other days that I'm just like that I'm a Christian and having the time over lockdown has given me the space to really invest in my relationship with Jesus and I have thoroughly been enjoying that um in some ways, that's not such a good thing for my family because I would spend two, three, four hours, if you let me, <laughs> just, you know, doing Bible study and prayer. Um, and everybody else was thinking, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so in, in that sense, not so good. But in other senses, it really has given me such a peace, such a peace and such a, a level of assurance and so much um, strength from which I can encourage other people who are, who are really finding this a very, very tough time. And there have been quite a few of those people. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Raquel. And that's just on that last point that you just raised there, you know, just kind of finding the strength to help other people. That's so important because during this season, we get so caught up in, you know, what I need to do, and what I'm going to, and we get very moany and so on. But actually, there are a lot of people, particularly in this lockdown, who are finding this a lot more difficult than you and I could ever imagine. Absolutely. Like the stuff that people are dealing with under their roofs right now. I mean, you know, the issues of sort of, you know, domestic violence that, that you know, is, is a big one right now, you know, in yeah. this lockdown. So when you get into that place where you're kind of moaning and complaining, you know, we need to remember um, that, 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 you know, for, for at least those of us on this, on, on this discussion, you know, what we're dealing with, whatever it is, is nowhere compared to what others are dealing with. And, and we do need to be, um, to find that, that sort of, you know, place where we can offer whatever we can to others, um, whether it be a listening ear, a word of encouragement, and just kind of come out of ourselves, just get over ourselves, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and look at the bigger picture, you know. Um, I, I think for me, um, one of the biggest lessons um, that I'm learning in this lockdown is, is how to get the balance between pushing myself to achieve um, and also being realistic about my expectations of myself. So we, when we were going into this lockdown, I thought, right, okay, because of my sort of various hats that I wear, I'm, I'm out and about a lot, you know, I'm, I'm going and seeing people, doing all sorts of things, right? And I, you know, I, I, I expected that once I'm at home, I'm going to have a whole lot of time to do stuff, right? So I'm like, <laughs> after this lockdown's over, I'm going to have done this and done that and done that and done that and done that. And then we're like three, four weeks, when we're about three, four weeks into lockdown, I was like, actually, I haven't done anything new, anything different. And then by the time we get to week five, week six, I'm like, I'm starting to freak out. So I'm like, you know, lockdown's going to be over. And what am I going to show for it? And then after a while, yeah. I just kind of sat down I, and thought, should I anybody identify? identify? Right. So yeah. I was starting to get really hard on myself, right? And then I just sat back and thought, hold on a minute. And I think this is where it comes from, the issue of the peace, right, Raquel? Because I find myself mm -hmm. doing a lot more praying in this period. And then I just kind of, I think a moment just came where I just sat down and I thought, look at your day, Angela. And actually, how much more time do you have? I think there's a bit of a myth <laughs> About, yeah. <laughs> about you're going to have loads of time in your hands when you're in lockdown. And I thought, no, it's only 24 my, hours, love. <laughs> what has actually changed for me? I'm working from home, right? Like fully working from home. So I'm doing my hours working from home. Then I'm now schooling from home, right? I've got three classrooms mm -hmm. that I've got to deal with at home, right? Yeah. I'm churching from home, right? And, uh, and so tell me, please, what has actually changed other than the fact that I'm saving community time, which isn't much anyway. 
So I came to a place of peace. <laughs> like, you know what? Just get through lockdown and be intact. That's an achievement. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like set lockdown. myself free <laughs> you know? so i don't know whether that resonates with any of you guys but you know that whole thing about yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. all right so i'm not yeah. alone it is. <laughs> <laughs> so how about we have a look at some of the um responses that we've had um as i said i mean it's it's loads we've got loads yeah. and there's no way i don't know we could end up sorry yelan we could end up with like <laughs> one two three four just so we can have a lesson <laughs> we won't traumatize you um so i'm going to just pull up a, a, a couple of things that, that we've had um okay. and and let's just talk about them this is one just kind of following on from this issue um of time um there is just now um uh, let me just pull that up and we'll, we'll look at this so um somebody said not having enough time is really not the problem rather having the discipline to use time well i have more time than i normally would but not doing as much as i thought i would if i had more time so slight spin on what we've just said which is that actually maybe we don't have more time um but it, do, do you does that resonate with any of you uh, you've yeah. got more time but you're you like she's she's much dying to jump yeah. in there no, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, 100%, even what you said, Angela, I'm thinking to myself, that's probably it right there. That's probably why I feel really stifled in lockdown because I'm freaking out. I feel like I have so much to do. I'm, I'm currently pursuing um, studies in law. My work has become even more intensified because of the nature of what I do. Um, I currently specialize in housing legislation. So I work with an organization that provides housing advice and assistance. And because of the, the pandemic crisis, uh, the lockdown, a lot of people are facing, you know, crisis situations relating to their home, mm -hmm. whether that be mortgage properties or private rented properties. And so with that kind of work, I'm freaking out because I feel like I should be doing a whole lot more, but yet I'm way behind on things. I would have been able to balance work and studies, and now I can't. So I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. And that's where the panic comes from, honestly, when I'm thinking, this isn't me. No, I can't do this. I, I yeah. also think, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, um, Yolan, and I understand, and I can totally identify with Angela and the, the person who submitted that. But I think in this time, we also have to give ourselves some grace because we Absolutely. are going through, we're going through something that we have never gone through, That's that our right. parents have never gone through. And I think we probably have to go back at least uh, uh, two generations back to the era of Spanish flu in order to find someone in our, in our, you know, in our family line who has dealt with anything like this. So we have to give ourselves some grace. And also the same 24 hours a day that we had outside of lockdown is the same 24 hours that we have inside of it. So I think it's a mind game and it's a mind game that we can either play along the negative angle or play along the positive angle. If you tell yourself, outside of the lockdown I only had eight hours of my work day and what I got completed is what I got completed and think okay I have eight hours a day that I'm working from home what I get completed is what I get completed mm -hmm. but I think that sometimes we feel guilty because of the fact that you're physically at home you feel mm -hmm. like you're supposed to be in your comfortable space yeah. so you feel like maybe I'm not working to my full potential because you know I can just pop down and get a sandwich or I can just check my <laughs> Facebook or I can just do this you know but in reality <laughs> You still have the same amount of time that you had outside of, you know, so sometimes we have to give ourselves a bit of balance. And I tell myself that as well, because I'm like, oh, now I can finally, you know, do this online course. I can do this. I can do yeah. that. I have a book that I've been working on for ages and I'm like, oh, lockdown. I can work on this book. And sometimes my mental is just not there. Yeah, and I'm like, exactly. I can't, I can't force it just because I'm supposed to have this free time, which is not really free time is the same time we've always had. You yeah, know, so absolutely. I have to say, well, sometimes I just got to just relax. If I just feel like just vegging out today and not doing anything, then that's just what I'm just going to do. You know, absolutely. you can't, as you guys like to say, you can't come and kill yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come and kill myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One day at a time. <laughs> One day at a time. That's yes. it. That's it. And I think, I have I, to I, say, yeah, go ahead, Raquel. Okay. I was going to say, I have to say for me, it's been, it's been quite a challenge in, in, in balancing because I'm a part-time worker as a teacher and part-time I'm a performing artist. 
and it's always been a, 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 a challenge to balance how much time I spend doing my job as a teacher and how much time I spend doing my job as a performing artist, as well as how much time I spend doing parent and mother and housewife and all of those things. Um, and at various points throughout lockdown, I have found that maternal guilt, that mm -hmm. workplace yeah, guilt, yeah, yeah. that <laughs> performance all guilt, rolled into that one. writer's <laughs> guilt, all attacking me yeah. that you know I should be writing more oh I should be spending more time preparing schoolwork or I should be checking up all the things that I need to be doing to prepare the reports yes the dreaded reports are here <laughs> 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 and you know you know at points my, my family are saying this is not one of your teaching days why are you doing schoolwork mm. and I have to say it needs to be done if I don't do it today it's only going to come back and bite me. People seem yeah. to think that teachers have it easy. <laughs> <Do> you know, <laughs> that's, just, <laughs> that's just what I was going to say, Raquel. Do you know when this started, all parents were like, oh, this is payback time. This is the teachers are rubbing <laughs> their hands in glee. <laughs> like, now you see what we go through teaching your children. You know, but actually, you know, obviously you've got schools, right, where um, you're providing care anyway for the children of frontline um, um workers right um, yeah. and then preparing the online lessons and so on so I think we have to cut well I have to repent a little bit <laughs> of my view of teachers are just having the time of their life this time. but I guess it's just as hard for you guys as it is for the parents trying to do the schooling now <laughs> and I feel for the parents doing the schooling because to, to some extent you have the, the parents of children who understand it and get it and can get on with it and yeah. then you have the parents whose children are struggling and yeah. people, sometimes the parents themselves are struggling that's with right. this. That's right. Sometimes you have children with special educational needs and other such things, and they're struggling with just the behavior side of it, let alone sitting in front of a screen, which they're not accustomed to yeah. for so much of the school day. There, there have been challenges. There seriously have been challenges. But coming back to the whole issue of time, I suppose it's just like the castle was saying, the mindset. You know, you do have to think about it carefully and remind ourselves that there is only 24 hours in a day and no matter what you do, you can't add any more to it.